In this video, we're going to do an example of charge sharing that involves equipotential surfaces. So let's say that I have a conducting sphere that has some amount of positive charge distributed on its surface. And let's say the total amount of charge is plus Q. And then I've got another sphere that's a different size. So let's say that this has a radius of R2 and this has a radius of R1. And then I connect the two spheres with a long, thin conducting wire, and I allow the system to equilibrate. Now the question is, how much charge is on each sphere? So how does this initial charge get distributed on each sphere? So now this charge, this sphere has an amount of charge Q1 on it. This one has an amount of charge Q2. What is Q1 and Q2 equal to? So how do we solve this problem? Well, there's some potential ideas. So maybe the charge is just split evenly between the spheres. Uh, maybe the surface charge density is constant between the spheres. Or maybe there's something else going on here. And it will turn out that yes, there is something else going on here. And the key is that the system is in equilibrium. And that means that no charge is moving from one sphere to the other sphere after we've allowed the charge to redistribute itself. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that there is no electric field along this wire pointing from either sphere. So pointing from this sphere to this sphere or from this sphere to this sphere. Because if there was, then some of my charge on Q2 would move back over to Q1, or if there was an electric field pointing in the opposite direction, then some of my charge from Q1 would move over to Q2. But the system is in equilibrium, so the electric field has to be equal to zero, so there is no electric field along the wire. And that means that if there's no electric field along the wire, then the integral of the electric field along the wire from, let's call this uh, point A, let's call this point B, from point A to B, this is equal to zero, which means that the difference, this is just the difference in voltages between the two surfaces. So the difference in voltages or the difference in electric potentials between these two surfaces has to be equal to zero. Another way of saying that is that the potential on the surface of sphere 1 is equal to the potential on the surface of sphere 2. And so we, need, we can use this to figure out what the charge is. So let's give it a try. Well, the potential for an arbitrary spherical distribution of charge outside of that distribution is just K, which is Coulomb's constant, times whatever charge is on that sphere or the total charge inside or on that sphere divided by the distance from the center and in this case we have our v1 if we want to know the potential right on the surface we just plug in r is equal to r1 and we don't know q it's some value q1 but we'll hopefully figure it out so v1 is just equal to k times q1 divided by r1 and similarly, V2 is just K times Q2 divided by R2. And so if we set these two equal together, the Ks will cancel out and we'll get Q1 over R1 is equal to Q2 over R2. And so this is certainly progress. Uh, it's, we're, we're getting there, but we still have our answer in terms of both Q1 and Q2. We'd like it in terms of the things that we were given in this problem. And what were we given? Well, we were given Q, which was our starting charge on one of the spheres, R1 and R2. So is there any way that we can use, we already have R1 and R2. Is there any way that we can use our initial charge in solving this problem? Well, we know that our initial charge has got to be equal to our total final charge. So some of the charge moved from the first sphere to the second sphere, but we didn't add or subtract any. And that means that our initial charge, which was just Q, has to be equal to 
q1 plus q2. And we can rearrange this equation to eliminate one of our variables. So we could say q2, for example, is equal to q minus q1. And if we plug that in to this equation here, then we'll get that q1 is just equal to q times r1 over r1 plus r2. We can also solve for q2, and we'll get that q2 is equal to q times, not q1, just q, times r2 over r1 plus r2. And so this is an interesting result. This says that the amount of charge that each of the spheres gets is proportional to its radius divided by the total radius. And that's sort of unexpected. I, I kind of would have expected the charge to distribute itself proportional to the area, but it turns out that that's not the case. And the reason is that what has to be the same between the two spheres is their potential, their electric potential. And that's because this system is equili in equilibrium, so there's no electric field pointing from one to the other. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.